From the Weather NorCal Command Center, this is your morning update. Well, happy Monday morning to you. I'm Chief Meteorologist Mike Kruger. Back to the old grind, right? We're on Monday morning. Let's get you to Kruger's Quick Cast here for your Monday, October 14th. We're almost midway through the month, and here we are looking at those cooler temperatures. Now, the shoe fire may still bring some haze and smoke for parts of the valley, especially the north end of the valley, and it looks to be favoring mainly east of I-5. But that being said, we still have to kind of watch for that. It all depends on how active the fire is and exactly what those winds do, but that's what it's looking like here uh, through the morning hours. And then, of course, the coast, looking at uh, mostly cloudy skies and some fog out there. Temperatures, look at that, the Modoc County, still 39 degrees at 8 o'clock this morning. Uh, so as you're heading out the door, just be prepared for some of those cooler temperatures and haze and smoke. So let's take a look at that smoke forecast. So the winds are blowing from north to south, so that should help to, again, depending on how active that fire is, it's going to blow some of that smoke and haze in. So you see how it's favoring mainly east of I-5, but say around Red Bluff northwards, we have the best chance, and of course, north of that as well take you into this afternoon about five o'clock. We're still seeing some leftover haze out there, but most of the smoke is actually in the vicinity of the fire itself. And then you can see 10 o'clock, still a little bit of haze, just lingering maybe towards the north end of the valley. But there you can see the approaching storm system off to our west. This one looks to push mainly to our north. So chances for rain out of this one are just not looking all that great, unfortunately, at least for everyone. I think there's better chances to the north, which we'll get into that in our deeper dive forecast. It's warming up, uh, at least to start off the work week. We're going to be flirting with those 90 degree readings, I think, for some of us. But for the most part, in the mid to upper 80s in the valley, there's, of course, the haze for Red Bluff northward and eastward. Places like Fall River Mills, Bernie, Shingletown, uh, Manton could all still see some of that haze and smoke. Otherwise, mainly in the 70s, although if for Trinity County, inland areas low to mid 80s, low to mid 60s for the coast this afternoon. Let's take a look at your seven day outlook. So, again, I put the word chance in there for Wednesday, Thursday. Here's what I'm going to say about that. Do not count on it. In fact, I'll probably be taking this out of the forecast here, if not today, tomorrow, just because I'm just not seeing a whole lot happening for the valley here. There's the haze, not so much in the way of haze over Chico with sunny skies. Another thing you'll notice here is the temperatures are going down on those chances for showers before going back up again. We're going on a bit of a roller coaster ride. I think the better chances for showers will be, uh, looks like sometime around uh, Tuesday evening, Tuesday night. Uh, but again, it's still a slight chance here for that Wednesday and Thursday time frame here, especially to the north around, say, Siskiyou and Modoc counties. But to the south of that, even in the eastern mountains, Lass and Plumas County, probably not seeing much. All right, that is your quick cast. Hey, check this out. You know, a buddy of mine, two doors down, gave me a text and said, hey, walk outside. You should be able to see uh, the comet. I didn't. I got out to it too late. Because uh, by the time I text him, I said, I don't see it. He goes, oh, my goodness, it's gone. So it's going, it's, it, it was last night, just shortly after sunset. You can still see some of the, you know, the sunset right there. But look how prominent this thing is. I want to thank Cleve K for sending in this image. We also got one coming in from Barbara Matthews. You can clearly see that comet and then that faint the tail behind it. What an absolutely gorgeous sight in this one. Wow, Kevin. I mean, come on, you're quite the photographer. Now, this is out looking, you can see the fog along the coast here. You mentioned something about Blue Lakes and some of the, uh, some of the lights there. But there you can see the sun is setting, and look at that. So you might be asking, will I see it again tonight? And the answer to that is yes. Be sure to go out tonight, shortly after sunset or right around sunset. Keep your eye to the western sky, and you'll be able to see something like this. Check it out. I want to thank Kevin for that beautiful picture here. If you want to share your photos, maybe you snap some today, tonight, right? Do that. Share it from the weather, free Weather NorCal app from the iPhone, your Android. If you don't have it, just search for Weather NorCal in your app store and, well, you got the app there right on their phone here. Dry and warm start to the week. Cooler with showers possibly by midweek. And again, we'll take a look at future casts. You'll see what I'm talking about. Elevated fire risk for Thursday and Friday and probably even into Saturday. 
But with our temperatures, we're talking about a roller coaster ride. They're dropping after today, going back up towards the end of the week. All right, here's a look at the latest fire perimeter from the shoe fire. Again, I have to remind you that typically around eight o'clock in the morning, give or take a half hour or so, we get the latest updates. But this is the latest update as of early this morning. There's the latest fire perimeter as well. 7% containment, just shy of that 3,000 uh, acre mark here. There you can see the shoe fire is about 13.7 miles from I-5 around Lakehead. And did get a request from the folks out in Big Bend asking for some information there. 10.6 miles from the northeast side of the fire there. And there, of course, you can see the information from the Shoe Fire. And just some other surrounding communities out towards Dunsmere, just under 20 miles. O'Brien, 13.1. And Montgomery Creek, just under 10 miles from the fire there. Do we need to be terribly concerned about these communities? Probably not. I mean, we're getting that toward the end of the fire season. And especially with cooler temperatures on the way, that should help. But again, we got more of that fire weather risk toward the uh, end of the week. All right, so here's your smoke forecast. Again, you see where most of that smoke is for the valley and, of course, working its way northward into eastern Siskiyou County. By 5 o'clock, it's beginning to kind of phase out for parts of the valley. Most of the smoke is actually in the vicinity of the fire itself. And then you can see as we go into tomorrow morning, now we're seeing most of the smoke to the north and even to the east. So parts of Bernie, Shingletown, Manton, all seeing some of that haze at the very least. Then more of a southerly flow of winds will help to push most of that smoke into northeastern Shasta County, eastern Siskiyou County, and even parts of Modoc County unfortunately. Let's take a look at those winds and the fire weather risk here. Nothing, nothing alarming here today, tomorrow, or even Wednesday. You'll notice that on Tuesday, those winds do begin to pick up a little bit here, and even more so for Wednesday coming out of the north-northwest. This is the pattern setting up, and those winds will get stronger for your Thursday, Friday, and even your Saturday. Now, the humidity... We've seen much worse conditions, but it looks like humidity levels will start to increase on Tuesday and Wednesday in the teens, 20s, and even some 30s, especially for the north end of the valley. So nothing terribly concerning, at least through midweek, but by Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, with the winds and the low humidity, you've got to be on the lookout for that higher fire danger. So this is something we'll be monitoring and watching very closely through the week. There you can see the next band of clouds kind of coming in from the west. But really, if you look at the big picture here, big swirling area of low pressure, speckled clouds. This is what we start to see as we get closer to winter. This is a colder storm system. Now we've got these disturbances rotating around the area of low pressure. So this is still in its developing phases here as far as any storms that are approaching us. So let's look at future cast. This is the latest forecast model data and this is what it's looking like so far. So for today, clear skies even for the coast, turning out to be a pretty nice day. It's gonna be on the warm side too, especially for the valley. Maybe some more of that fog developing along the coast here uh, tomorrow morning. Tomorrow afternoon, there is a very weak boundary that could bring some showers late in the day Tuesday for places like Del Norte County, for example. You see how this line pushes through right here? Notice it's just way too weak to sustain and make its way over the coastal range. But I do expect that by Tuesday night into Wednesday morning, maybe a chance for some of that coming in. Now, it redevelops as it moves over Modoc County, even parts of the north northern portions of Lassen County, then that's out of here. Now, you can see how it's picking up on maybe some activity here off to the west here. So you see how it's trying to push through through the day on Wednesday. But we're seeing sunny skies here. So you're saying, well, why are you seeing a chance for showers on Wednesday when Futurecast is showing sunny skies? Well, again, cooler air is moving in and more unstable air is moving in. So we can't rule out a stray sprinkle or even a light shower. So again, this is something I'll be fine tuning here as we go into the next few days. But that's essentially what it's looking like at this point. So let's take a look at Thursday, another system. And this is going to be more of a, what we call an inside slider. So it's coming from the northwest, working its way down to the south and east. And also take note. We're beginning to see the blue. That's the snow. So this is a colder storm system and temperatures are going to drop significantly by Wednesday and Thursday. That drops down to the south and east. And as a result, now we're looking at more of a pattern setting up for a strong north wind event, especially for Friday and Saturday. Then by Sunday, as this area of low pressure shifts to the north and east, our winds die down then our eyes are focused again on some systems that may pass to our north come Monday, 
Tuesday of next week, another system that will, you see the area of low pressure right here, this may kind of work its way through, giving us another chance for showers by early next week. Now, again, we're looking a long ways out. We can't take a look, look at this and go, this is exactly what's gonna happen because it's not gonna be exactly what happens but it gives you an idea of the trend. And here's the trend that we're looking at, folks. It's turning into more of a cooler and unsettled pattern here. That's a welcome sight. That could bring us some of that rainfall, but just kind of give you an idea what the forecast models are picking up on as far as rain is concerned, mostly to the north and to the east here with at least Wednesday and Thursday. For the end of beginning of next week, you see most of it along the coast and in the mountains, but look at the valley. The forecast models aren't picking up on any rainfall there. But again, I don't want to completely rule it out. I don't want you to be surprised if on Wednesday or Thursday, you see a passing sprinkle, especially for the north end of the valley, but don't count on it. Below normal uh, rain is expected here, especially for the south end of our area, but to the north, kind of in that near normal, meaning there's a a chance, an equal chance of above and below normal rainfall. So bottom line, yeah, not a lot of rain, but the chances are certainly there. Warmer than normal is what we're looking at here. However, take a look at the trend. It drops, goes up again, drops, goes up again. So we're still seeing a bit of that roller coaster ride over the next 10 days or so. The wave heights, they are expected to stay fairly high, especially as you head out over 10 nautical miles. Then we go into Tuesday, they do decrease a little bit here, but do need to mention there's a beach hazards statement for the entire coastal region. There you can see the increased risk of those sneaker waves. So don't turn your back to the ocean. Not a good idea to have those little kiddos playing uh, along the shore there without your supervision. Northeast winds at about five knots, waves from the, north, from the west that is at five feet at 11 seconds and from the west at six feet at about 17 seconds. Some of that patchy morning fog. Now, again, Notice I've got the wording in there, chance, but I don't actually have any raindrops flying from those clouds. That's because based on the latest forecast model data, I'm not seeing a ton of it. However, we've seen the chances over the last few days. So I'm keeping it in here for today, but watch tomorrow morning. We'll see if I still have that wording in there or not. Uh, there's a chance I may be taking that out. Temperatures low to mid 60s along the coast. And for Siskiyou County, 81 degrees for Happy Camp, 78 degrees for Wairika. Better chances for showers, especially Tuesday night into Wednesday for Mount Shasta. Slimmer chances on Thursday. Your Modoc County neighborhood forecast, mid to upper 70s for your highs. There's, of course, that chance for showers, especially Tuesday night into Wednesday morning and then slimmer chances on Thursday. Your Eastern Mountains neighborhood forecast. We did see some of that maybe possibly Wednesday, uh, but uh, mainly to the north, uh, but otherwise dry and a warmer start to the work week. Your Valley neighborhood forecast brought to you by Walgameth Painting. You've got those temperatures in the mid 80s for basically Corning southward, even some low 80s out there for places like Gridley. Look for a high of 88 for Redding, 84 for Whiskey Town, uh, and there you can see Lake had a high of about 84 degrees. Let's take a look at your seven day outlook for Reading and those temperatures are going to start to slowly drop after they still maybe a bit of haze and smoke for the Reading area even Red Bluff uh, low to mid 70s for Wednesday Thursday honestly I'm not expecting much in the way of rain if anything like I said uh, tune in tomorrow because most likely I'll have those chances out of the forecast we'll see Friday mid 70s low low 80s by Saturday and Sunday Wiggly Mouth Woggy Mouth. No. Painting. Wig. Wiggy Mouth. It's Woogie Mouth Painting. It's Walgamoth Painting. And yes, we'll paint anything.